I already took the liberty. All right. Now, Congressional Record. Now, this is a very great article because it goes into the how vote null and void the actual 14th Amendment is. And it is the 14th Amendment that allows people to accept privileges and benefits, making you a statutory citizen and making them have military occupation and authority over you. Okay? So <laughs> homework for tonight is read the congressional record. I'm going to go through a few of these so that we can kind of get some understanding of what's going on. <clears throat> and this whole reading, and this whole reading it goes through, and I'll read some of it for you. But in any event, it goes through how three-fourths of the state rejected the 14th Amendment. And so by them rejecting the 14th Amendment, it is null and void. But what they don't tell you is that what the freedom actually comes from is the 13th Amendment and its 20 sections with. And so it's this form right here is what I'm talking about. This form right here is so powerful right here because you got a certified copy beloved of the 13th amendment now in the constitution they only reference it okay they only give you the abstract of it they don't want to tell you about the 20 sections of it okay which is very important because you want to go up under the 13th amendment it's funny how they got the 13 states, <laughs> and then you want to be under the 13th Amendment. Because if you start to uh, act in public uh, saying that you want civil rights and saying that you want certain uh, privileges, they're automatically going to categorize you under the 14th Amendment Act, which actually the only way they can keep that in office is simply through commerce, the Commerce Clause. Okay, the commerce, the commerce clause of you being chattel property. So these are things that we need to read so that we can understand where we are in our process and how to stand on our liberties and to reserve and retain our liberties, not rights. All right. So this is a very good synopsis of that. But I want to make sure everybody is doing their birth certificate authentication correctly. So we're going to go through those forms. Now, the first thing you want to do <clears throat> when you authenticate your birth certificate is you're authenticating it through the state in which you were birthed. So if you were birthed in Arizona, then you would send your birth certificate with Arizona's authentication form. All right? Now, let's go over here. Authentication. For request for, all right? So when you get to your state, Secretary of State, they'll have their request form, all right? Now when you pull this up and you print it off, you would put your birth name, right? Your phone number, and then your address, okay? Now order information. List the country of extended use. What, it, well, what, would you, what country would you put here? This would be a non-Hag Convention territory country. All right? We need to get out of the territory that the United States Corporation governs. You want to be out of there. So Taiwan typically is one that everyone uses, but if you find Taiwan on that list, find another one that's on that list. Make sure that it is out of the Hag Convention. It's arbitrary. There's no particular reason why people use Taiwan or they use another one. It's the whole point of being out of the United States territory. Okay? That's the purpose of the document. All right? Now, list the number of documents to be authenticated. You only need to send one birth certificate. Okay, because once you authenticate this birth certificate on the state and the federal level, every birth certificate after that one is already accredited. Okay, now, so you would put one, then special instructions would be USPS, priority mail, prepaid envelope for return. And you would also put... So this says it's $5, $5 money order enclosed. You would take this form, that birth certificate, and your $5 money order, 
and your return envelope. And all of that should be contents of that priority envelope that you're sending them. Okay? So you're sending, you're sending it priority, and then you're going to send them a priority prepaid envelope to return to you with the request form. Do not forget the money order and the birth certificate. Now, once we have that, and then that comes back. So when that birth certificate comes back, now we're over here to this form, the DS-4190 form. You would fill it out the same way. So birth name, um, if you have a suffix or prefix, you shouldn't, or you might, I don't know. Um, if you're a junior, senior, that's what they mean there. Um, this is optional. Okay, put your phone number. All right. You don't need to do all that. You don't need to do that either. You see it says federal agencies. That is not for you. The country. Now, this is where a lot of people mess up. This is not where you put Taiwan at. This is asking <laughs> for your information. Okay, because if you put Taiwan there, then they're going to send your authenticated birth certificate to Taiwan. All right? Oh, heck no. All right, so you put that. Now let's just put in your address. It says, are you submitting retrieving this request on the behalf of an indiv another individual? No. All right, now if you have children that you are sending their birth certificates with, okay, that's where you would select that. I would recommend... Um, if you're doing a household of birth certificates, say you're a husband, you're a wife, you have two children, have everyone have their own DS-4194 form, okay? Because if you're the mother and you're, uh, you're getting your uh, child, then you would say yes, and then you would put your information here, all right? Now, you go down, method, delivery method, all right? Self-address stamped envelope. All right, and then this is where you would put that USPS is where it'd be. Then you put your tracking number here. All right, now shipping address, same as above. All right, now you go on down to section four. All right, country. Now this is where we would put Taiwan. We have one document. Well, what kind of document is this? It's a birth certificate. All right, total number of documents would be one. Estimated cost for federal level is $8 out of our envelope. So we should have one more priority envelope going to them, right, Sterling, Virginia. And inside of this envelope, we should have that birth state authenticated birth certificate. Do not detach it. It goes in the envelope just like that with this request form and an $8 money order, and another prepaid return envelope. Right? Mm. right. Oh, now we send that off down the river. And that's exactly how we do the birth certificate authentication. Okay?